Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to share a word of, of encouragement about faith. All right, we are going to read a few verses from Hebrews, and then we're going to back that up with Pat's two cents, okay? We're going to go with Pat Love's two cents. All right, now let's go to Hebrews. Get your Bibles out. <clears throat> Hear me getting bossy? Okay. We are going to read right here. Hebrews chapter uh, 11, starting at verse 1. We're going to read 1 and 2, and then a few verses below that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be the son, of, to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. All right. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. This is what I'm dealing with. Okay, so don't go anywhere. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about. There's another scripture that says, uh, oh, I can't think of it. No, I'm, I'm, it has to do with if you uh, diligently seek the Lord. Yeah. If you diligently seek the Lord, you will find him. Okay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But this is what I want to talk about. You must believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek them. It came back. <laughs> you have to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you know... This is what you do when you're looking for something, okay? When you're looking for something, you're digging, you're, the phone's ringing, no, I don't have time for the phone. Somebody's calling you at the, no, I don't have time, I'm looking for this, I got to find this, it's very important. Yeah. Well, diligently seeking the Lord is even deeper than that, you guys. Some of you won't hold people off for a minute. Some of you will push people out of your life for good because you see the importance of drawing close to God. Do you hear me? Okay. You believe his word. And some of what you're not even sure of, you're seeking, you're reading his word, you're praying to him, you're spending time with him so that you can get to know this father of yours. And you're not going to let anything or anybody else get in the way of that. You're building yourself up in the most holy faith. Well, check this out, you guys. Once you start really believing and your faith is really secured, of course Satan's going to get his foot in there and try to, you know, spoil your feast of charity, so to speak. You know how they say one monkey don't stop no show? Yeah. Well, 
This is one monkey that's always trying to stop your show. And when he is resisted and he flees, he always comes back for more. Because he just never realizes that he's already lost. Yeah. So what happens is when you're going through a trial, listen to this. When you're going through a trial and and tough times are hitting you and, and it seems like the storms of life are just whipping all over you and beating you down and knocking the very wind out of your sails. Your faith is your anchor. Your faith is the thing that's not going to let you get tossed off course. Your faith is the thing that's not going to let your, your ship sink. Your faith is the thing that's not going to make you bail and jump off your ship. Ah, okay. Now let's get to the story. In Genesis, Exodus, in Exodus, get your stuff together, girl. Moses, at this point, he is leading the Israelites. And now God has finally got the last word. And Pharaoh says, go, just go. Okay, because his son is dead. Now, the Israelites are getting themselves together. They're packing up and they're, they're hitting it, baby. They're hitting that road. And now they have to wander through. They're entering the desert. And they think they're scot-free. And God leads Moses to lead the people right up to the sea. He's looking at this big, vast ocean. There's no way to get over it but to swim or get in a boat. There is no boat. But guess what happens? Pharaoh gets ticked off. And his little something rises up in him. And he's, nah, I'm going to go get them fools back. So he gets his army. And they go in hot pursuit. Oh, he's hot too. Son dead? Oh yeah, he's hot. So he's in hot pursuit of these Israelites. And he gets to them. He gets real close. He can see them from afar off. He can see them. But check it out. Moses was right in the center. I'm saying this because some of you guys, listen, some of you guys think when things start going wrong, you must not have heard from God. It, it must not be God because there's too much opposition. Mm. But, Sometimes the opposition comes because you have believed God. You have acted on faith. You have obeyed his word. And you are right where you're supposed to be. Now, who would think that being right on the edge is where God would want you to be? That's a very dangerous and precarious position. Now, wouldn't you say that the Israelites were in a dangerous, a dangerously precarious position with their back to the ocean and their front and their, or their front to the ocean and their back to the, 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 the uh, <laughs> uh, Pharaoh and his army? The enemy is in hot pursuit and they're standing there defenseless. All they have, there, it's like being between the devil and the deep blue sea. Where do I go? I can't go that way. I can't go that way. Where do I go? It's like being a trapped mouse. But here's the thing. Think about this now. They were right dead center of God's will. Moses had obeyed God to the letter. And those people were right where God wanted them to be. You know why? Because now it was time for God to show out and let them know when God is for you, baby, doesn't matter who's against you. That doesn't, that's not, 
That's, that doesn't even add up to a hill of beans. Okay. Moses prays. God instructs him to hold that old raggedy stick that he'd been carrying all that time. And he throws it. He doesn't throw it, but he aims the stick over the ocean. Sticks it up in the air, whatever. He makes a gesture with the stick. And the people are fussing at him. They're in panic mode. Pharaoh's in hot pursuit. He's on their heels. And God opens up the ocean. All of a sudden, the wind is whipping. Now here's another storm. And it looks like, wait a minute, Pharaoh, now we're up against, you know, the devil in the deep blue sea. And the deep blue sea is starting to stir. We don't know what this means. The wind is whipping. What's going on? It's whipping hard. It's windy. Oh, no. Is this going to be a tornado? What is going on? Everything's breaking loose on us right now. <laughs> but guess what? The wind, the storm, the clouds, the lightning is God's handiwork getting ready to part the whole Red Sea. Right in, right into this nice little open wall of water here, wall of water there, and nothing but dry land, not wet sand, dry land. Now, is that a miracle or what? And as they start to cross over, Pharaoh and his army are coming on them now. They're getting hot on their heels. And God hinders them with a pillar of fire. Now they have to wait as they watch the Israelites cross over. And then here comes God's wisdom. He says, okay, you want them? Come on. I got something for you. And them nitwits... Seeing God's power, they actually think that they are going to be safe crossing the Red Sea in hot pursuit of the Israelites. There is no way I would have even tried it. I'm looking at the wall of water and the wall of water and they're across safe and I'm safe now. I would have kept it like that. I would have just, you know, just counted my losses. No. Pride comes before fall and a haughty heart before destruction, you guys. These dingbats decide they're going to go in hot pursuit because God lays a trap for them and they're too dumb to see it. They're so busy looking at their goal that they don't realize God is a little bit smarter than them, you think? So what does he do? He calls him, yeah, come on. And he drops that pillar. The pillar just phew, disappears. And it's, oh, no more fire. Oh, hey, come on, let's go after our little flunkies over there. And they get those little wagons and those horses and their chariots and they're crossing that Red Sea. And what happens? Right when they get right in the middle, right before they're getting ready to go up and come on up out the water, God just brings the water and drowns every last one of them. And now Pharaoh has to go home with his tail tucked between. <laughs> yeah, with his head hung low. With no army and no slaves. So much for the enemy, you guys. Okay. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against your enemies. You have nothing to fear, but you have to decide where is your faith? Is it in God or is it in your opposition? Why do you have opposition when you're right in the center of God, when you're obeying God? Don't you smell a rat? You think God is sitting up there saying, psych? I don't think so. So come on now. Think about it. Come on. God is faithful 
to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in us. So where is your faith, you guys? Who are you believing in? Hmm? Now, if God can make that ocean dance like that, don't you think God can and toss your little enemies out of sight, out of mind? Come on now. Don't be so easily intimidated by opposition. Sometimes opposition is a good thing because it forces you to safety. It might make you bust a move you never would have made before. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. I'm not going to go any further on that. I want you to think on that part when you're right in the center of God's will. Sometimes God allows the devil to corner you. And then God works a miracle. And you know that you know that you know that you know that nobody did that but the miraculous hand of God on your behalf, in your favor, in the enemy's face. Hmm. God bless you and be encouraged, you guys. Fear not. Look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Yes.